stands for Global Thinking, Local Action, Universal Impact. And GLUE is our service learning program for high school youth in New York. The idea behind GLUE is to show students that they don't have to travel far from home to make a big impact in their community, but that at the same time, the things that they do right here in Washington Heights and Inwood can have an impact on people in other parts of the city, the country, and around the world. They're learning that they can get involved with simple actions, but that they can also learn about the global consequences and the justice issues that connect what they're doing to other people around the world. We also hope that GLUE inspires them to make service and justice a lifelong part of who they are. Um, it inspires them to stay involved in the community long after this week is over. Um, GLUE is partially funded by Council Member Idanis Rodriguez and by Council Member Robert Jackson. Well, this week, the students who are participating in GLUE come from three high schools in New York, Xavier High School, Cardinal Hayes High School in the Bronx, and Mother Cabrini High School here in northern Manhattan. And it's great to see them interacting and mixing with one another and getting to know each other. Um, we've had participants in the past from um, public schools in the Bronx and northern Manhattan as well. Well, this week I'm working with GLUE, and um, we're just going around helping different organizations with um, maybe food drives or the elderly, younger children too. Uh, the reason why I did this during my February break was to do something productive instead of just, you know, lazing around lazily around my house. Well, today I worked with Isabella, a nursing home, and I was actually working at, down in the kitchen, and I helped make sandwiches. And then I worked with some of the elderly there. I fed them and I just spoke to them. They're really friendly. Some of them were, have worked in construction and they talk about how they've um, done schools and actually nursing homes. Yeah, it was really interesting listening to all their stories. I've learned a couple things. Uh, I've learned just today that uh, there's a, a lot more people impoverished than I thought and um, just how tough it is um, you know, when you just assume people are in poverty through, like, their own fault or laziness, but there's a lot more deeper issues, like, maybe, like, they are dealing with a huge loss in their life that we can't really know, and it's, you have to stop judging people when you first meet them, which is something important that I've learned. Uh, I also learned, uh, yesterday about how, how obesity has a lot to do with, um, Poverty, because um, the cheaper the food is, usually it's not made as healthy. Uh, they have a lot more calories and just a lot more bad stuff for you. And like I always thought that'd be a connection, but like I didn't really see just how clear it was. Yeah, I think um, what I've always recognized is that no matter how many different um, service experiences you have, um, whether they can be several of a similar theme or all different or with different groups in different places, um, that they're just like never. Um, a lack of an opportunity to learn and it could be a lesson that you already did learn once and life goes on and it's easy to forget um, and so you know yesterday we were we were packing food and I've done lots of things that have to do with with food distribution and hunger issues and um, meanwhile the schedule for the day got a little bit mixed up and uh, our lunch ended up being later than expected and it was close to three o'clock and you know, me and the kids were kind of looking at the food in the food pantry and joking around about how we'd love to like break open the peanut butter a little bit. And that's something that no matter how much you talk about, it was so real for me again to remember, I'm not just doing this as a way to talk and think, oh, hunger exists, but like, I'm hungry, it's uncomfortable, I don't want to be here anymore, and I don't have a lot to give because I'm distracted. Well, one thing that I've learned this week is that hunger and poverty not only impacts on uh, people in a, on a worldwide level, people in our community experience it too, and we have to be more aware of the issues so we can help, so we can help people the best way that we can. I've worked with Coth, and Coth is simply Community League of the Heights, and they have they, it's an organization that helps people who are hungry. They have their own food pantry, and they they help people that are hungry. They supply meals and make sure that people are being fed and at the same time they have everything that they need. Uh, Monday we worked with FYI, I forgot what the acronym stood for, <laughs> but uh, it was just uh, taking uh, little uh, local use where they would go door to door with deliveries for people, not door to door, uh, deliveries with people who, like I said earlier, can't um, th uh, due to illness or disability 
and it's nice that they take the local youth, so you know they have a connection with uh, Washington Heights. Um, I met a kid there who was a senior who was finishing up his last basketball season, but um, he was he's been working there since he was five. And I thought that was fascinating, and I asked him like uh, why he's been working there for so long. Uh, he said that his brother and sister who are older than him also did it. So it's nice to see like um, it's really in the family, and if you grow up there, like a lot of people, they stress that they're their children go through into this program because they feel it's as important and I tend to agree. And then I think the second thing that I've experienced that I, I think the students do um, as well is, is recognizing that you can't always, that once you are, your heart is broken by seeing the problem and then you can't pick up all the pieces and having to sit with that frustration. So seeing the kids recognize issues of hunger and recognize how people have to live and then realize, oh, I can't do that, I can't fix that today. Or I could come back to this soup kitchen every day for the next year and I wouldn't fix that. Um, and that's something you know we started to dive into a little bit today is, but how can you be a part of that change? And you know we can't all take the credit for having fixed it ourselves, but how can we you know, be, the, be the builders in that, even though we're not you know, master builders, but just be the workers kind of um, on that journey. So I think, they, I think they started to get it today, which is good. Glue is being organized by Centro Altagracia. We're a social service center, a community-based organization in Northern Manhattan, and our mission is to work with the faith communities of Northern Manhattan to inspire them to become men and women for others, to use their faith as a springboard to become more involved in the community. And we also empower them to believe that they're capable of making a positive change, that they're capable of deciding how they want their community and their parish to look, to learning about the justice issues that impact them, to taking a stand, and to raising their voices. Um, Centro Altagracia was based on the Jesuit Social Service Centers in the Dominican Republic, and we have very strong connections both to the Dominican community here in New York and to the Society of Jesus. Glue fits in so nicely with Centro Altagracia's mission because we want to inspire people to take part in their community and to take on responsibility. Um, and it's really never too young to start. So this opportunity with GLUE fits in so well with our work with adults on our social ministry teams who become a really integral part of their parishes through their work for justice. Um, we work mostly with adults in the social ministry teams and we're really excited to be working with young people because we believe in their passion and their enthusiasm and their energy and there are so many wonderful ways that they can make a difference. And we also know that if they can start learning about these issues now, then they can be young adults who make choices for their community as they're discerning their vocation, as they're deciding who they're called to be, um, that service and justice will already be part of that.